Simon, the honky tonk professor. We present a grand American jazz pianist, one who's done everything in the music. He's played with such greats as Charlie Parker and Lester Young. He's also had a million seller in the hit parade. He's written for Broadway. He's composed film scores for Woody Allen. And all the while, he's been acting as a kind of curator of jazz piano history. He's here to lay before you an entire historical conspectus of jazz piano styles. And the name of this honky-tonk professor is Dick Hyman. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Dick, the things that you were doing to that well-known march were really part of the prehistory of jazz itself. Well, I think so. The, uh, the origins of ragtime are in this peculiar uh, syncopated rhythm that could be applied to any given melody of the period. For example, if my left hand, if I play the, the original march, the, it's the right hand that's ragging it. That's the, uh, the nature of ragtime right there. Mm. Most jazz histories are content to start uh, with ragtime, but you, I believe, prefer to go back just a little bit further. I think you can go back earlier than that because there was an American composer named uh, Louis Gottschalk, and he composed as early as the 1850s using melodies he heard the slaves singing in New Orleans, which is uh, his native place. Uh, for example, he, and then he transcribed these things and they're published and they're available now. One piece of his is called Pasky Nod. If I'm not mistaken, it dates from 1855, but if you listen, you will certainly hear some ragtime after I get past the uh, opening theme. I think that's that's my case. Yeah. <laughs> Whichever way you look at it, it's, it's still New it Orleans, which is interesting. Well, it? that's true too. When when ragtime proper came in, that was very much based on the march format, wasn't it? Yes, it was uh, customary to have, as marches do, a little introduction, a first part, a second part, a return to the first part, and then some other section, which is usually known as the trio. And. Uh, all, almost all of the great rags were written in that form. Uh, for example, Scott Joplin's great uh, 1899 hit, the uh, Maple Leaf Rag, is very much in that form. I'll play a little of that.
you play that with a lot more pep than we've come to expect from, say, Joshua Rifkin. What do you think about the classicizing of Rags in the way that he's done it? Well, I really, I really like what Rifkin uh, told us about. He, he, he explained that in his playing that ragtime could be a lot much slower and more contemplative and, and have more emotion in it. Uh, nevertheless, I think there are a couple of points of, uh, of thought on that. Uh, it's true that Joplin and his pieces notated at the top of them do not play fast. It is wrong to play ragtime too fast. But nevertheless, we don't quite know what he meant by slow and what he meant by fast, so I take a middle course there. By now, we, we must be on the borders of uh, stress, 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 stress